Hey guys, I hope you're ready for another lesson. Today we're gonna look at genetics. Now this is a very important lesson in T7 because um, ATI added a lot of new information to this lesson. Um, it's also a very long lesson now because of all the additions. So I'm gonna break it down to multiple parts. Okay, so today is gonna be part one. So first, let's look at the differences between T6 and T7. So you can see that the old um, lesson title is just about chromosomes, genes, and DNA. And then the main learning objective was um, understand the function and relationship between DNA, genes, and chromosomes, right? So that's what's in T6. Now in T7, things are very different, right? Um, you still need to know the different and the relationship between chromosomes, genes, and DNA. But now see, RNA is added to the lesson. And the reason why we now have RNA is you need to know the entire process of gene expression, which is basically the um, genetic information flow from DNA to mRNA and then to um, proteins, right? The genetic information is used to make proteins. So you need to know the two steps in gene expression, and that's transcription and translation. Now, in addition to that, you also need to be familiar with the DNA replication. That's important because that's when mutations are more likely to occur, right? When DNA replicates itself, um, you know, it the enzyme could make a, a mistake, right? And that will introduce a mutation. So that's one way that we could get mutation in our genetic material. And with a mutation, you need to know the impact, right? Um, how do mutations affect uh, proteins um, and specifically amino acid sequence, right? Because if the sequence changes, then you will get a totally different protein. All right, first, let's go over the um, relationship between DNA, genes, and chromosomes. So we're going to skip RNA for now. Let's just look at the other three. Now, the other three um, structures are really in a hierarchy, right? Meaning some of them are going to be at the smallest level, and then um, they will get bigger. Now, the smallest one is DNA over here. So DNA are really just... Um, these twisted letter-like structure, right, which we also call double helix. But if you look at DNA from a little bit far away, they really just look like threads, right? Kind of like these. Now, DNA is actually not the smallest structure, right? If you want to be very technical, DNA is made up of nucleotides. And there are four different nucleotides in DNA. And then we'll uh, go over them on the next slide. So nucleotides are going to be the smallest, right? They're the building blocks for DNA. All right. Now DNA is a very, very long strand, right? You may have, you know, thousands and thousands of nucleotides. Now some stretches of DNA code for proteins. Certain parts of the DNA code for certain parts of the DNA code for proteins. So those segments are known as genes. Okay, so that's, oops. So this is one gene right here, right? And then you probably notice that there are two terms here, axons, and uh, in between them, there is one intron. So the difference is not the entire gene code for different proteins. Okay? The parts that code for proteins are known as axons they uh, express themselves, right? Um, just remember EX is expressed. So these parts of the DNA are expressed, meaning they're used to make proteins. And then um, this segment in between axons, um, intra, helps with uh, making alternative protein products. But here, I don't think T's is gonna go that advanced. So you can just think of introns as a fillers between axons and the DNA segments that are introns do not code for any proteins, okay? So again, introns do have important functions, but for 
uh, T's, we don't need to know any uh, of the specifics. So you can just think of introns as um, filler segments, filler DNA segments that are in between exons. Okay, so genes are the smallest scales, right? They're only small parts of the entire DNA strand. So genes are the smallest, and then DNA. Actually, I should add nucleotides too. Actually, I should add nucleotides too, right? Because they're the smallest, they're the building blocks. So nucleotides, the smallest. And then um, a lot of nucleotides can make up a gene, right? So all the nucleotides in this part of DNA uh, make up this particular gene. Right. Genes may vary in size. You can have a few hundred nucleotides in the gene, or you may have more than a million nucleotides in the gene, right? So the size can vary quite a bit. If you um, go another level, right, that's the, the DNA strand, right? Again, one DNA may have uh, many, many genes. All right, there is a term here called the nucleosomes. So each nucleosome is a structure that has eight histone proteins. So these uh, kind of ball-like structures are histone proteins. There are actually eight, but you can only see seven. So there's a one like, in that far um, lower corner that you can't see. Why do we have histone proteins? Now, DNA can be very, very long, right? You may have thousands, millions of nucleotides. So it's a very long strand, and it's very easy to tangle up and that could damage DNA very easily, right? So you want DNA strands to be organized so that they um, don't get damaged, they can stay intact. So we have this system in living organisms, which the DNA strand is like a thread and the histone proteins are like a spool and DNA thread wraps around the histone spools so that this keeps the DNA strand organized and protected. Okay, so that's nucleosome. Just now imagine that you have, you know, thousands of thousands of these nucleosomes, but of course, in between the nucleosomes, you do have just the DNA strand. So if you have this many nucleosomes, all condensed, right, they form this structure called chromatin. So chromatin is more string-like, right? Like this. It, it's not very thick that you can see under the microscope. But at the very beginning of a cell division during prophase, chromatins will condense and they become very compact. That's when you get chromosomes. So chromatins, chromosomes, they're the same, right? But chromosomes are just the, the more compact and more condensed version of chromatins. So, of course, chromosomes are going to be the largest structure, right? The highest um, tier between all these um, different structures. Okay, now there's a one note here that's mentioned in T's. So um, I want to uh, kind of quickly point this out. We all know that we have different cells, right? Your hair cells can look very differently than your liver cells. So what causes that? Because you know that all the cells in our body have the same genes, right? We have the same genome. How come different cells look so differently? And the reason is that they express different genes. So even though they contain exactly the same genome, exactly the same versions of genes, they have different genes turned on. So hair cells may express the gene for making keratin. Right? And the liver cells, on the other hand, will um, express genes that make certain enzymes, right? say detoxification. So again, the key is which genes are turned on and expressed. That's why different cells have different appearances and they perform different functions.